The Big Apps Cornhole Podcast presents episode two of Shuck It or Chuck It. Here to talk a little gambling and cornhole. We got we got the boys back here. We got Cameron and Sean talking cornhole. Um, how you guys doing? Good. Good. Doing well. Doing well. So we had a bit of an interesting national number two. Um, uh, you know, some some guys doing exactly what we thought. Some more people coming out of the woodwork. So I'm gonna let you guys take it away. Tell us how your bets did and uh, did you guys win any money? Let's 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 go talk numbers. I mean, I think one of the ones we agreed on right away when we were going over, especially singles, was Josh Holland. Um, he didn't win the event, but we talked about national number one, how you can you can never win the entire event unless you win your bracket, right? So I always look at somebody, who do I think has the potential to make a bracket final? Because if you get to the bracket final, anything can happen. Josh Holland was one of those guys at plus 1,200. Um, for the first one, I felt really comfortable with. I was pumped when I saw him win the bracket. He was throwing well. Unfortunately, he ran into an Alex Rawls, who was, I think, arguably the best player on the weekend um, going up to that point. So um, it, Josh Holland is one that really stuck out to me. What about you? No, definitely. Josh Holland, Creek Killer, definitely made his emphasis again that he is the real deal. And the silent assassin, I mean, he put it to everybody. He did. The other one I thought was interesting um, who had even a you know, better line was Mark Richards, 3,500. I believe he lost in the bracket finals. Um, again, it, it, somebody were recommending he was right there knocking on the door. Had he won his bracket again, anything can happen. Um, I think that, uh, you know, in singles, I think we showed that we, we were on the right path at least. Oh, definitely. That's all you can ask is to have a dog in the fight in the end. And we were definitely right there with, with Richards. There's no doubt about that. I mean, one that I missed out on a little bit, and I think it was, I was hoping that he was going to kind of catch fire a little bit and it was going to be the same story as last year was Brett Guy. I thought he was a little disappointing. Um, lost that, you know, first matchup, but I thought that if he won that, he could have kind of coasted through. Lost it to uh, Bob Vonch, I believe. Bob Vonch was kind of just wrecking brackets. Um, originally, we thought that it was probably going to be Jordan Power that he was going to have to play. Um, Jordan Power couldn't make it, missed his flight or his flight got delayed, something like that. So he ended up not even playing. So I'm thinking, hey, looking at that, is Brett Guy, even a better bet right now. I felt really comfortable going in that Bob Bonch with hey, his jean face, shorts and new balance. Oh, all right. Just, Come on now. The just dad crushed, crushed my soul. Crushed my soul. I mean, um, one that stuck out of my mind that just a little disappointing was Helper. I'm waiting for him. I know he's going to do it. Yeah. I, I just feel like this one – it got him a little bit. I just, I don't know. Was he 21st? I think he finished up something like that, but yeah. he was plus 5,000. I mean, again, I would, I feel comfortable, you know, I, I, I would, I would imagine he's going to probably but... stay right around that number. He was, so he, was be... he was 80, 80 to one, the first national and they dropped him to five, uh, 50 to one plus 5,000. That's probably deservedly. So, cause he made it, I had him the first one. I want to say he made it to, he made it to the see. bracket. Finally lost. Final. To yeah. There you go. There you go. Again, he's right there for 80 to yeah. one. That's all you can ask. Do you think that do you have a feeling like is he gonna probably stay right around that 50 to one odd then? That's gonna be the interesting part. I mean, looking at the odds from the first one to the second one, really nothing to quite compare yet until we get a third one. Then you can really see where they're making their adjustments and if they're overreacting. I mean, it's just like any sport, they overreact uh, to what happened, or are they actually basing this off of some of the raw stats? That's gonna be the interesting part to see. So would the overreaction be we were just talking about Jordan power, not making it maybe like jump in his line a whole bunch, just because he, his rank is really far down there right now. Um, I, I, that's going to be, I don't know because he didn't get to play. So it's not like he had a bad performance. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think, I think we were all hoping that we're going to get this really great line for Jordan power. I just don't see it happening. I think he was, was plus 600 last time. Plus nine plus 900 last time. And the very first national, he was, plus 2000 so 20 to 1 so they adjusted I'm, I'm from 20 to 1 to maybe, 9 to 1 i can now see I him maybe gonna... yeah uh, plus 1000 kind of feels right for that you know maybe 1100 maybe falls in that josh holland range he gets to that 1200 if he's right around there that's when i feel really comfortable going jordan power someone who's going to have a fire under his ass he's currently ranked 245th now obviously you throw away the second national he's going to be he he's a top 10 player we all know that so I, feel com- I, I would feel even more comfortable if he's at that, you know, plus 1200 range. I would really hammer that home. And that's the interesting part. We're going to see of how DraftKings actually reacts to these lines. If they're going solely off of ranking and they pop open a Jordan power and he's down the middle towards the end. I mean, that's, you got to hit that right away because that's obviously a mistake, but they're not going off of a ton of history. So I really don't think they're 
quite knowing where all this stuff should be. I mean, Andrew, I, I, they have to have some sort of input, I would imagine, from the ACL, right? I would imagine Trey Ryder's got to submit because if you if you're going based on how they did the first or the second national, I mean, Jordan Power wouldn't even get aligned then. That. And so I think the ACL is going to have to, they have to be putting some of this information in because like we were talking prior to getting on here, it's, it's tough to even find information. Some of the stuff Trey Ryder's tweeting is phenomenal information. And that's all information that I wish we as the general public could easily access. And it's not that hard to get. I mean, I shouldn't have to go onto Twitter and look at all these in-depth stats. That's what, when you're trying to quote unquote handicap something, these are the information, this is the information that we need to form an opinion and build off that opinion and it's it's hard to get right now and i think if we got a little bit more of that the whole betting aspect is really going to gain traction because then anybody can feel they have a strong case based on xyz right now it's just well this guy's playing good i think he's going to do good i'm going to bet him or if you have some of the raw data you're looking at all these other sports i do a lot of betting with basketball football baseball you name it and it's all on raw numbers it's all math i don't bet on teams i don't bet on people i bet on the math, the data behind it. And that's what I hope we get in with the coronal here soon. I mean, the tweets are great, you know what I mean? But they're such small snippets of information. So we're only really at, at the most, we're getting like a top 10 number and whatever way they're trying to manip manipulate the numbers. And like you said, it's great information, but give me the raw data myself and let me analyze it how I want to. Let me come up with my own way. And I feel like, I don't know. I don't think that they're intentionally like hiding anything, but even when they put the stats out under like the ACL page, they only give you the combined singles, combined doubles, and then the total stats. I want to be able to go back and see the stats for each event. You know what I mean? Like I, I want agree. to see every ranks and, and see where the changes are. And, you know, who is really the hot player? Who's trending the right way? Who's trending the wrong way? And, you know, even if they had a shitty performance, what was that do? You know, did they just run into a hot hand? I mean, those are all things that are really important going forward that I'm hoping the ACL is listening to this. And we've gotten, I, we, they have gotten better. You can now click on the bracket as it's live and go back in every game and, and see the match stats, which is fairly new. They haven't had that the whole time. So they are improving. We just hope they can continue with these improvements moving forward, ideally correct. to benefit the gaming space. But if we had the raw data as a whole after a tournament and we saw someone that looked a little suspect, like, oh, I feel like we can then go back and see that name, find his match, and then go look at the individual statistics that way. You know what I mean? Like, I, I shouldn't have to go into every single match and then look at it ahead of time. Give me the raw data as a whole for each tournament. And I feel like it's just going to make a world of difference. Definitely agree. Definitely. So I'm agree. hoping the ACL is going to come and I get it. It's probably a lot of work in putting all this kind of stuff, but I mean, with, with the use of the tablets, I mean, everything should be automatic. I mean, how hard is it to just take that spreadsheet upload it to the ACL with some sort of link? Like I, I don't get why the general public doesn't have access to that. Like I just, to me, it does not make any sense whatsoever. And, that, and that's that's the way you're going to get outside people into this sport. I mean, there's a lot of degenerates out there that just, they'll bet on everything. And oh, yeah. they'll feel like they have an edge based on information they're finding. If these random people that are not involved in the sport right now, they have no clue to even start to find this stuff. All these numbers and names are it's just all foreign to them. So if they can actually have a, a database to kind of do their own digging around on and easy to move over around on, they feel they can make an opinion. And I think that's going to gain traction with not only them being interested in the sport of Cornell, but obviously betting as well. And hopefully they can make some money at it. And soon all they'll have to do is go to harddragpush.com and then go to the, the, um, the shuck it link. And we're going to have all this information up there. Um, so I think it, it's growing, right? You said there's going to be outside people coming in. I think that uh, right away, even since the last national, they added another state. We're now up to 10 states that can now bet on cornhole through DraftKings Sportsbook. It's going to just keep getting more and more. I'll be interested to see how many states are added by the end of the season. I, I don't think, you know, 12 to 15 is out of the realm of possibilities for this year. I know Ohio, we have to wait till 2023. I'm chomping at the bit. I can't wait for next season already just because I won't have the opportunity to see the, some of the stuff, but um, it's growing. We need the stats. So ACL help us out here a little bit. Green. 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 All right. Nerd notes. What's that? Nerd notes. Yeah. So uh, it's time for some nerd notes. <laughs> so okay. Dane's still getting used to hosting here a little bit. So we're going to jump over to nerd notes. Um, so Cameron has been kind of breaking down, doing your own analysis based on the first national, second national. So any particular stats kind of jump out to you that, um, you know, that are more important than some others. Well, definitely, especially in this last national, we had five lines for singles to bet on. If you would blindly bet every favorite, you would have went four, oh, and one. And the one being a push with Jordan Power, 
So when we're talking in the betting space, we generally use the term units. So say on like a minus 130 line, if your unit is $100, you're going to bet $130 to win 100. So if you would blindly bet all that, you'd have went 401, you'd have been up $400. And doubles, you would have been 4 and 1 up 2.7 units. The only loser you would have had betting the favorites would have been Rawls and Birchfield. So interesting trend to start. Favorites between doubles and singles, eight, one and one, you'd be up 6.7 units. And if you're betting the underdog, you'd be one, seven and one down 7.1 units. That's something that's going to be interesting moving forward to see if that continues. If that's the case, then that seems to be that they're not making these favorites a big enough favorite. A minus 130 should be up to a minus 155, minus 160. And, and that just means you're going to have to delay more money to win your bet. And that's when you know, it gets a little bit tougher with really putting the percentages in. I mean, if we just look at a, a minus 110 odds, minus 110 comes out to 52.38%. So you're going to win at least 52.5% of those bets to make money. Whereas if we're going up to a minus 160, we're up to 61 and a half. Take the vig away. There's a little more math involved, but that's the basis. I mean, that's a big percent when you're talking long term. And that's going to be the interesting part to see how high some of these favorites get. The highest we had in the card last was... Ruben and Power in doubles minus 160 over Zach Klein and Halbert. And for being the highest favorite, that was a pretty close one. Ruben and Power finished fifth, tied for fifth. Zach Klein and Halbert tied for ninth. Not too far separation with those two. That's definitely going to be something to, to track moving forward. I got both the first and the second national. I'm just going to keep rolling this data over and over. And hopefully we can find some nice trends and pick off some numbers we feel are a little shallow. Now, there was a difference between National 1 and National 2 with the head-to-head matchups. National 1 was first-round matchups. So I think it's just something to – For two um, of them. They had some tournament long, but they did have two first-round. So it just makes sure that if you it. are betting on this or you're something new, make sure that you're, you're, you're reading, you know what I mean, whether it's a tournament, whether it's a, a round matchup that they're going over. So it's just something to kind of keep an eye on. I'm, like we said before last time, I'm really hoping eventually that they're going to have it so that you can bet on a bracket winner. I think that's when it's going to get really, really interesting. That is definitely going to make it more interesting. And that's going to be, I mean, it's going to create more handle or more bets and money for them because it's going to give more opportunities to bet on something other than just the outright winner, which is very hard to do with the talent that's in this division. It's super hard to see something that's consistent. I mean, you're not going to get rich laying favorites every time, although Matt Guy may prove that otherwise. He, he might, he might, although last, you know, last time didn't work out so well. And then Creek Killer didn't even have numbers, correct? He didn't, he didn't have numbers at all. You yeah. would have had Rawls obviously getting second. He was plus 5,500 or 55 to one. And he was, I mean, if you had that in your pocket, you're sitting pretty good going to the championship. And then Creek Killer with no odds comes through at the win. So. Oh, believe me, I was, I was ruined hard for Holland over Rawls. And I was rooting hard for Creek Killer because then I knew that we would get <laughs> then Hollow was going to hit it. But um, yeah, I, Rawls is going to be an interesting one. I mean, I think potentially he's going to make the biggest jump, you know, from last time to this third national. I mean, 55 to one. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if he's something at like, you know, six or seven to one this next national. Oh, I think you have to. They have, they have to adjust based on what they saw. And I don't believe he even had odds listed for the first national looking back. No. Because first he national, have- he finished second in his bracket. And he didn't even have odds listed for him to Correct. bet on. Yeah, so I mean, he might be one of the top. I mean, he might be one of the top three favorites then going in. And it's going to be interesting to see if there's any trends with going against the previous winner. I mean, looking at the doubles, Malone and Johnson coming off the win were minus 130 favorites over Birchfield and Rawls. That was the only one that lost. And is there any Welcome regression? People. regression from – you know, previous success and kind of going through the motions a little bit to start, you know, they can't already have your, your win under your belt. You feel accomplished, maybe falling asleep a little bit to start. I mean, these guys have been here and they play a lot of the bags and I don't know if that necessarily gets to them, but that's always a, an element that, I mean, we as a third party can percept of, you know, potentially finding value in some of these lines. And I could be wrong, but I don't believe there's ever been a repeat winner in singles, like in back-to-back nationals. <sighs> Can't confirm on that, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. I don't think there's ever been yeah, a back-to-back no. winner in Cornell. Um, so don't 
take that as gospel, but I'm I'm 98 percent sure that there's. I think Trey was closest last year, didn't he have like a yeah, first but I or don't, second? Yeah, but he I don't think he ever won. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah, think there's ever been an outright winner back to back. But we'll see. I mean, but technically, again, if we're looking at this, if Rawls makes another final against, let's say, a junior player that doesn't have a line, I mean, technically, you can consider him back to back winner, at least in our mind. And that's in our mind, correct, correct. Yeah. What other what other uh, numbers are you seeing, like trends and stuff that uh, you thought were interesting? Anything else? Uh, that's really the main one. I mean, it's blindly betting the favorites, which a public better generally wants the favorite because you're going to win more times than you're going to lose yeah. that bet. You might not necessarily make more money in the long run because you're having to lay more money to, to win, but that's what the, the standard person wants. I mean, it's no fun rooting for an under if you're talking sports. Nobody wants to not root for baskets or goals or whatever it may be, and it's kind of the same same with this. It's a little tougher in their minds. Well, they're probably not going to win. Well, the line implies that they're plus 130. They're not expected to win yeah. over 50% of the time. But if they win, you know, a little more than the projected odds of minus 130, then you're going to make the money. And that's the, the part to understand. It's, it's hard for most to grasp, but until you really look at the numbers of your wins, losses, and if you're tracking your bets and seeing if you're actually making money at the end, I mean, you can go three and one, but if you're betting massive favorites the whole time, you may not necessarily be up that much money in your head psychologically. Yeah. I picked three winners, but you got to look at some of the lines you're laying and you can't be laying these massive favorites. If you don't feel that that line should be that high. Now let's go just because, you know, this is only our second episode. People might be tuning in. They're still kind of getting you like their feet wet and like this whole you know, sports betting thing. If they've never done it before, you had mentioned a term before units, right. And you and I had kind of had a conversation via text uh, earlier this week where you were talking about, um units and then percent of like your total net right that you should comfortably better like to be smart can you go over that a little bit yeah if we're talking i mean being a true discipline better which there's very few out there but i mean it's if you're something if this is something you enjoy and you're really trying to take it serious with with all sports i mean anything you can bet on bankroll management's the key i mean you can't just go gung-ho and put all every dollar you have on one bet because you're not going to have anything to bet with moving forward. So most, most stick with a, a true unit size and generally a unit is 1% of your quote unquote bankroll. And then generally if you're playing a max play, you're only going to do five units. And it's not really recommended to be laying out anything more than 5% of your bankroll. If you're truly in it for the long haul. And I'm thankful that I've, been betting for a while now and I've been profitable for six years in a row and I track every single bet that I make and once you kind of get that installed in you it's it's hard to break but I see so many people that just they might win 10 and then they're gonna I'm gonna go all in and you know try to double my money and that's that's a tough strategy to go and hopefully people are betting responsible because it is easy especially betting on a sport that most people play which is cool to say you know I I played against these people I want to bet on it I mean, bet responsibly. Nobody wants to to lose more money than they have in, in this. I mean, it's supposed to be enjoyable. It's supposed to be recreational and just make sure everybody's betting responsibly because it it is addicting. Betting's addicting. I mean, slots are addicting. All these people that, that get addicted to this, it's just bet responsibly. That's all we ask. And it's all quote unquote I think financial if you bet, advice. I think if you follow his advice, bet responsibly and you keep listening to us. I mean, you're going to, you're going to be good. All right. Cause no, I, th- I think we make people money in the long run. I really do. Listen, I think uh, the first national, we just kind of thrown something together, you know, something you and I have been talking about for, you know, since that right after the first national it ended. Um, I think we did, I mean, for our first time ever doing, I think we did as well as you can ever expect predicting some without predicting the outright winner. Right. Um, so we did pretty well knowing that without having any of the numbers, the lines present yet, you know, just typically they're coming out like, like nine, 10 days before the national. Yep. Who are, so let's go over some names and singles that we might kind of keep an eye on that. We think that we, we think that the line's going to be favorable for where we're looking at, like where we maybe, maybe let's keep the favorites out of there. Right. Cause obviously, you know, Matt guy is going to be the favorite going into this first one. Alex Rawls is going to have a very favorable after being uh, 55 to one. We're expecting him to be, you know, probably somewhere better North of six to one. I would imagine somewhere right around there. Who are some names that we're kind of keeping an eye on? I'll be interested to see where the lines are. Do you have anyone that comes to your mind? I think we can use the same strategy we lo- we used with the last one. Is It's kind of see how people are trending coming into that. One of our angles with betting Josh Holland was he was fresh off a win the weekend before at yep. the West Georgia one. We thought positive momentum would continue, and, and it did. He had a good showing. So I think that's definitely something that we can use. And I mean, we follow most of these tournaments, and I'm always watching some match on my phone. 
And I think we can kind of see, you know, who's trending in the right direction. And I mean, if somebody's putting a big pity post up of, you know, I'm losing my mind, I'm not doing as good as I used to, their mental game's not there. And that's a tough part of the game. And if you feel that that's a negatively affecting that person, that's probably not somebody you want to back moving forward. And some of these stats that Trey Ryder are mentioning on here, I mean, I'm not familiar with all these people, but I mean, I've definitely heard of them. I mean, players with the highest PPR that also have a negative DPR. So the point PPR points per round, but their DPR, the defensive player per round. So I mean, these guys are throwing, I mean, very well. John Kitchen, 9.69, and he's still not scoring it around. He's minus yeah. 0.01. Brandon Davis, 9.53, minus 09. Sorrell's 9.48, minus 05. Donald Cup. These are the, t- the people you can feel you could potentially buy low on if we get odds listed for these or matchups listed because they have had bad luck and luck is generally a 50 50 proposition you would hope that positive regression would come and the luck would be in their favor moving forward and these are the things that i mean if you have a bet on those people you know it sucks they threw good but they didn't get the result but now in hindsight you can look at it as well maybe they're going to be misvalued moving forward based on the results but realistically they really didn't throw bad they the just first, had bad luck there's a few names that came to my mind when i was looking through just the overall single standings and know knowing how they went from national one to national two with the lines that I think that might be interesting. Obviously one that I, I'm feeling pretty strong with, I think he's throwing and I'm waiting for his coming out party again is Jamie Graham. He just come, came off winning arguably the best conference in Cornhole. He won singles from what I heard. He looked pretty freaking dominant. So Jamie Graham, obviously the line's not going to be as, as great. You know, it's not going to be as glorious as some of the other ones we might mention, but he just feels like if there's anything more like a safer bet, you know what I mean? Like that, I feel like pretty confident that he's going to win a freaking bracket again. It's going to happen. No, he's been there. Like we talked in the first yeah, one. Yeah. I just, I feel like he's knocking it. on he's the done. door again. Um, and that was one, that was one of my picks from the last national Jamie Graham minus minus one thirty over Ryan Windsor at even money plus 100. Jamie Graham finished tied for fifth. Ryan Windsor tied for 44. So I mean, that was a blowout winner. And one of the other kind of ones I think that. is really interesting that, Going into this year, I, I kind of expected him to make the leap. I think from his first year, um, two years ago to last year, he finally showed everyone that he has the potential to be a top 10 guy. I thought maybe he could even sneak in the top five with how he was throwing going into the season. First two nationals have been okay. Uh, Devin Harbaugh, he's another one of those guys that I think I'm really going to like his line at this next national that I think he's like one game away from making a bracket final. He's he, I think he's ranked uh, 15th overall in singles. He's just somebody that I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to like where he's at. Um, I believe last time he was, he, he was 40, 27 he was, to one. No, he was 40 to one last time. Plus he was 41. 4, okay. so in the first okay. national, he was 20 to one plus 2000. So they doubled his odds. You got twice the amount of return from the first to the second national. So now it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, that's a massive jump from 2000 to 4,000. So that's going to be definitely interesting one to see of, of where he opened. We'd hope it'd be kind of around there because we feel that's a pretty reasonable. Yeah, I mean, four, a four, a 40 to one feels right. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I like, I like that. So I, I'm hoping it goes up more because again, he might be one of those guys that same thing with Rawls, like where Rawls was last time, maybe we'll get 55 to one on Devin Harbaugh. And that's going to be somebody I feel pretty comfortable at that range, putting money down on. Now, what about him and uh, what about Harbaugh and King? They had a nice showing. They did. They did. I mean, if, if they're starting to trend upwards, I mean, they should have a pretty significant jump. Going I just feel one. like, did we already, did they, did they already ceiling though? Did they peak? I, I, yeah. I mean, there's, I, there's potential for that, but I feel like they played their best as a doubles team. Now we're going to have a little insider information because actually next weekend we're going to be with their King all weekend. He's coming up here doing the lessons and stuff with us. Uh, I'm going to ask him straight up, you know, how you feeling? I, I feel like they they're ceiling right now. I just don't know where their odds are going to be. I, I feel like they're going to be, their odds are not going to be something I'm going to be necessarily interested in, but we, you never know. We'll just have to kind of see what, where they're at. They were, they were 40 to one this last national. So you figure they 4, might 000. be a team that gets a 20 to one odds this time at that. I, I don't know if I love I mean, it. Uh, that's, that, that's the joy. You don't have to bet every single person, every single matchup. The books have to put an odd out. We don't necessarily have to bet it. That's the, the benefit of being the better. I guess you can pick and choose what you're investing in. The, the other name I had listed, and he's kind of like a blue bread, you know, like blue chip player, right? Ryan Windsor, who is obviously way underperformed from national one to national two. I mean, even national two, he had pretty favorable odds. Was he seven or six to one, something like that? He was plus 650. Yeah. I mean, I, that's, 
right there. I feel like another underwhelming performance. I feel like he's going to slide back into a, a range where I'm a little bit more comfortable, maybe taking a chance with some, you know, potential big returns. Or do you believe in the Ryan Windsor of last season where first two nationals underperformed and then came out of nowhere That's and really performed? I mean, the dude's finished, you watch the year the dude's finished the year second trends? overall in singles back to back year. Well, we, we know always mentioned guys Kong. like Adam Hisner. Yeah. He always turns it on at the end of the year. Correct. Like, so is he just one of those guys that maybe as the year progresses, he just starts throwing better? I, I no, absolutely. I think so. I think I mean, is, is, we just talked on Devin Harbaugh. Is there that big of a gap? Six, six plus 650, six and a half to one versus Devin Harbaugh, 40 to one. Is there that big of a gap between those two players? I would definitely say not. They should no, be I don't much think so. closer than that. So, correct. I'm looking, I like to get the big, I want, I want a bigger return. So um, let's go over to doubles for a second. Um, any doubles teams that kind of come to your mind right away? I think if we can get anything of Foreman Creek killer in the plus 7,000 range, that's definitely, definitely one I want to invest in again. I mean, that's, that's definitely way too high for what they should be well in the top fifth of these odds. They should be anywhere from, I'd say 10 to, 10 to 15 to one to win plus 1000 or plus 1500 to win as a doubles team yeah okay is because four they're, they're both they're something? both 19 they're both 19 okay. yeah so creek, killer, creek killer just didn't have one listed at all he yeah, yeah. he could have but he was would have been I mean, he finished like i think he finished like 49th or something like I that in so. national one um i'm interested to see where they're Derek and Josh Holland was one of those teams in the the last national that I really liked as a doubles team um going into the last one they were you know 30 to one odds um, I loved him there. I, unfortunately, I think that the, the cat's out of the bag with that one. I think that we're not going to see good, a great return. We, we were real close in this one, you know, from landing it. Um, I mean, knocking on the door once again, but I think that cat's out of the bag where if we see anything better than a 20 to one, I'd, I would be shocked. Agreed. Agreed. And it's tough. It's always tough to live with FOMO fear missing out. You know, I had him last time. Why didn't, you know, if they had only won last time, I had him last time. I didn't bet him this time. I mean, that should have, could have, would have type mentality. That, that's a tough one to have if you're betting, but you got to be a step ahead of these odds. Like you're seeing. And now, now you look back down on that range of who's going to be the next breakout team, doubles team, singles person that we feel we're a step ahead of before the market adjusts. And I mean, we get lesser odds on them. Who can we pick off the pack on that? And that's, we did a good job last time based on once we got the brackets out, kind of going through potential matchups where we thought an easier path was. And hopefully we can do the same next And again, time. we're just, these are names that we're talking about that this is pre brackets, pre pre lines, just people that I'm looking at standings. We're kind of just guesstimating a little bit on where we think they might fall. Um, another team that it, they definitely had a drop from national one to national two in lines and national three, I think it's going to be even further is guy and Davis. They did it last year. They have all the potential. They just haven't put it together yet, but they're one tournament away from making everyone look dumb for not picking them. I just feel like I don't want to miss out on that. And I feel like this third national is going to be there probably a good time to maybe the, with our odds there. I, I think I'm going to like it a little bit better. Agree. Agree. And then I'm trying to think if there's one more that I liked. Um, there's another team that I, I expect more of. They're currently ranked 17th, which is n- nothing to, you know, put your nose up about is Schlobaum and Modlin. They're this team, you know, that I feel like they're going to be under the radar. I feel like we're going to get really good odds with them this time. I mean, I think we're going to see somewhere north of probably 60 to one odds with this team next time. Uh, that's somebody I feel pretty comfortable riding with at that because of the potential I think that they have. Schlobaum did not have a great second national. I think it's a rebound time. Uh, Frank Modlin just came off of, uh, t- I think t- took second in the Carolina conference yeah. with Jamie Graham as mm-hmm. his partner. Um, Modlin's been playing very well as of late. So Schlobaum shows up. They might be somebody that we want to just keep an eye on going forward. Obviously let's wait and see where, you know, who they're paired up against, what bracket they're in stuff like that. But they're going to be one of those teams that I think might be worth uh, putting, taking a deeper look at, you know, with what uh, potential returns. No, I definitely agree with you on that. Awesome. So really to sum everything up first, this, you know, first show we did really well um, overall with our picks. I'm feeling comfortable going forward with this. As we get more data going, rolling through, we're going to be able to get more in depth. We're currently working on hard drag push network. We're creating a page just all about all this nerd notes. We'll keep all the latest lines from DraftKings up on the site. 
we have a kind of like a beginner's guide to these equations that, you know, you hear us, you know, talking 40 to one. And, you know, if you have your, if you put X amount of dollars, what's my return, we're going to have all that basic stuff on there, but we're also going to have our own, like kind of more in-depth stuff that Cameron's been working on behind the scenes. So it's going to be your kind of your one-stop shop for anything, you know, cornhole sports betting related, you know, visit hard direct push, you go to the shuck it page and all the stuff's going to be right there in front of you. So you don't have to do it. We're going to do your homework for you. So you just get to have fun and win some money. So stick with us and uh, we'll have some fun. It's always nice to win money. It is. It is. Cameron, it's always a pleasure, man. Yes, sir. You as I feel well. smarter just for sitting in the room with the two of you. I mean, via Zoom for Cameron, but you know, you guys <laughs> he's are he's drinking a beer. All right. Well, we have to ask you, what were you drinking? Yeah. Where, where you yeah. Well, we, we probably need a third because we've been empty, but we started with uh, Easy Eddie. Shout out to Reggie Reeks, head that's at the Clash out there, got second at that tournament. The fresh and juicy IPA, Hazy IPA was definitely powering. So, me. wait, they had something to make besides that. Bush Light. Wow, Reggie they did. and Bougie. Oh, my they gosh. Did. They did. He has, wow. a, he I mean, has a baby and he grows up. How about that? <laughs> hey, I got I have three months pregnant right now, so RIP to my cornhole days. Oh, yeah. That's listen, why I'm behind uh, yeah. the yeah. scenes now. Yeah, right. hey, it means you like got I six to... months left. Listen, listen, <laughs> one, having one, you're you're still okay. You know what I mean? Like, you're good. Just don't have two, and you're fine. That's a general rule of thumb. <laughs> a happy birthday to Jen. It's her birthday. It is Jen's birthday. And happy birthday to my wife. I know she's not going to listen to this, yeah. but just so I don't get in happy trouble in case anyone hell. says, like, I wish somebody else For the birthday, record, you so. said happy birthday to Jen first. I did. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, um, thanks for checking us out again. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for checking me out, Sean. I always I damn. saw you looking me always. up and down. Cameron, always well, a pleasure. And this was yes, a, a shuck it or chuck it. We'll be back before what uh preview after we get the odds uh, posted for the next one. We'll be back yep. probably Tuesday, Wednesday after that, ready yep. to lines drop and be ready to go. All right, boys. Well, thank you for all the information. We'll uh we'll let all the people go. So uh we'll sign off and uh see everybody later. Later.